I hope that y'all are having an awesome day. It was a good Monday for me. I got a lot accomplished. I am very, very happy with what I got accomplished today. I wrapped a lot of presents. Things that I'm not going to have to wrap on Christmas Eve. I even put something together today that I normally would do on Christmas Eve. So I'm really liking my new push to get things done before Christmas Eve. Well, I hope you had an awesome Monday. Uh, yesterday, I don't know where I was. Uh, Friday and Saturday, I had worked really hard on my computer all day. And I did not want to be on it anymore. I wanted a break. So that's where I was Friday and Saturday. Um, I don't know where I was last night. But I did listen to a great uh, message last night by Craig Greshel. And so maybe I was meant to listen to that. Okay, well, tonight we are going to do uh, Psalm 64, 65, and 66. And again, my name is Charm. This is my ministry, Awesome Treasures Ministry. I quit my job in 2018 to do ministry for God, and this is part of it. Um, all right, let's pray. I wish I would have gotten me some water to drink before I started, but let's pray. God, we just thank you. We praise you because we know that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. We know that there is nothing that you don't know. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are from everlasting to everlasting. And you are our everlasting Father. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge and so much more. Thank you, God. You are magnificent and powerful and mighty. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truths. You are loving and kind and compassionate and caring, trustworthy, faithful, forgiving, and patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we just pray for the prodigals to return, God, to see where they are, to remember, to repent, to um, be reconciled, God. We just pray for them. We pray for all the many disasters disastrous situations, either weather or otherwise, God. We just pray for these families, God, that you would give them strength, the ones that have lost loved ones, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God, that their needs would be met, that if they were physically harmed, God, or emotionally harmed, that they would receive healing, we just pray that their needs would be met by the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus, God. We pray for other people that have lost loved ones. There's been a lot of loss the past two years, God. We just lift them up to you. The holidays are so hard for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them and for them to feel your presence, God. We pray for all the people that are sick, people that are recovering, people that um, need to be well, God. We pray for healing for them and strength for their families. We pray for the people that are traveling, trying to get to their destination where they are going to spend Christmas. We just pray, God, for traveling mercies for them. We just pray, God, for our families, for protection for our families. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, well, my YouTube camera is lagging again, but I bought me a brand new camera. I hope to get better results with it. But I'm going to call UCAM 
9, which I upgraded the other day, and see why it's even worse than it was before. And maybe a little bit better, but not near what I thought I was going to get with my upgrade. Okay. Well, sometimes you don't get what you pay for. So I think that we need to, when that happens, we need to contact that company and go, hey, what, what is this? It might be a setting because I am not all knowing about cameras and videos and everything. Okay, so Psalm 64. Oppressed by the wicked, but rejoicing in the Lord. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret, pl secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of, of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of man are deep. Okay, what I just got through reading, I see a lot going on right now just like that. People plotting against other people not doing what God's called them to do, which is to love others and care for others. So I see this happening a lot, especially in our government. I see this a lot. But God shall shoot, them, shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So he will make them stumble over their own tongue. So their lies that they are telling, they will stumble over their own lies. All who see them shall flee away. And people that see this, they're not going to want to hang around. They're going to like jump ship. Um, all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. So there is going to come a day when all the evil in this world will be dealt with by Jesus, the one that's overcome all evil anyway. And so there is coming a day. So it's time to choose what side you want to be on. Because we do have to choose sides. We do have to decide whether we want to be saved and we want to follow Jesus. Or whether we want to follow the world and we want to just stay on the evil side of things. And I know a lot of people go, well, there's more choices than that. No, there's always been good and evil. There's been two choices since God created mankind. In the fall in the garden, there's two choices. Either do what's good by the side of God, not what you think is good. Or you do what's evil by the side of what the father of, lie, of lies says is good. So there's only two. There's only two. And there's only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus, God's Son. Okay, well, let's move on to, well, I don't know. Let me see. Let's go ahead and read the study part of 64 before we move on to 65. Sometimes I get confused. The poet felt overwhelmed by the secrets of the enemy against him. Evidently, the psalmist is experiencing slander from his enemies. Their words were like arrows aimed to destroy him. 
The Hebrews viewed words as living forces carrying the power to fulfill their purposes. The spoken word was like an arrow shot from a bow. It could not be recalled. Um, these verses remind us of the importance of guarding our speech. That's true. Once you say something, it is out of your mouth and it is out there and you cannot recall it. You can apologize for it. You can ask for forgiveness, but you cannot, you can't put it back in. It's just like toothpaste. If you squeeze too much out, can't put it back in. Okay, so Psalm 65. Praise to God for his salvation and providence. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, a psalm. Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion, and you and to you the vow shall be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you, that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. By awesome deeds and righteousness, you will answer us, O God of our salvation. You who are the and of the far off sea, who shall, who establish the mountains by his strength, being clothed with power, you who still the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples. They also who dwell in the farthest parts are afraid of your signs. You make the outgoings of the morning an evening rejoice. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for you have prepared it. You water its ridges abundantly. You settle its furrows. You make it soft with showers. You bless its growth. You crown the, the year with your goodness, and your paths drip with abundance. They drop on the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. So, everything is thanking God, is celebrating God. So it says this hymn of joyful thanksgiving, and it does just make you joyful to read all that. It just makes you happy somehow, or it made me happy anyway. Um, may have been sung as a spring festival celebrating God's salvation and his bountiful provision in the earth. The tone of the hymn is one of joy. All persons can come to God and experience his forgiveness. Forgiveness. Uh, God hears our prayers and responds to them. God is to be praised because he forgives our sins. God also merits praise because he is the great creator who establishes the mountains, con controls the seas, sends rain to water the crops, the poet described the wonder of God's provision in picturesque language. Even nature itself participates in praise of God's abundant provision. Amen. So we have a group of people out there that believe that they can sustain something they didn't create. And God has been sustaining it all these years. And he's been doing a magnificent job. I see that things are fixing to get messed up. But maybe God will step in and intervene before it's too late. But God is the creator of all things. God created humanity. God created 
the heavens and the earth. God created the land. God created the seas. God created all the animals. And God created our creativity that we have where we can create things, where man has created vehicles and man has created many things because God gave him the creativity, the ability to do that. So if you didn't create it, you can't sustain it. You just can't. They're going to fail. They will fail miserably. Because that's what God said would happen. And it will. Okay, so let's move on to Psalm 66. Praise to God for his awesome works. To the chief musician, a song of song. A friend of mine gave me, I love my cup, but it's big. It looks like a big old giant, you know, and it is big. It's 32 ounces, but it looks really big in here. But a friend of mine gave me a smaller cup, so I'm going to get it cleaned out and use it in here for this special time. Okay, make a joyful shout to God, all the earth, sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Selah. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing toward the sons of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. He's talking about the Israelites. There we will rejoice in him. He rules by his power forever. His eyes observe the nations. Do not let the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. Oh, bless our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise be heard. Who keeps our soul among the living and does not allow our feet to be moved? For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over your heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to rich fulfillment. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth has spoken when I was in the when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fat animals with the sweet aroma of rams. I will offer bulls with goats. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth. And he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Amen. That's so good. That's such good praise to God for everything that he's done. And why he deserves our praise. That is so awesome. So the study part says, All peoples of the earth are invited to praise God. One of God's great deeds was the deliverance of his people from Egypt. The God who has brought his people through great crisis is worthy of glorious praise. Such appropriate praise is defined by the offering of sacrifices in the payment of promised vows. So God is creator of all, sustainer of all, protector of all. And God wants a relationship with everyone, not just a few. 
everyone in this world. God wants everyone to be set free. God wants to do amazing things through everyone in this world. He wants to use us as his vessels to further his kingdom to make known his goodness, to make known all the miraculous things that he has done for us. That is what he wants us to do. And that's why he sent his son, which says love came down. He sent his son, which is best ever. <laughs> for unto us a child was born. That's one way to show you the t-shirt that I have on. Anyway, love came down in the form of an innocent baby. And you know what? Love died in the form of an innocent man. Because Jesus was innocent when he died for every one of us. So God wants that relationship with us through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the only way. Let's do our bracelet. Thought about, I looked at some more tracks. But I'm getting to where I get stuck on like two or three of them anyway. The two or three that I like best. Okay. So, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1.16 so I am not ashamed of the gospel. Please don't be ashamed of the gospel. So the gold color in this bracelet represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. We talked about that tonight. God is creator of all. Not some, not a few, not just Christians. Creator of all. He created everything and everyone. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and, want, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. Okay. Then we have the question mark. The black with the white question mark. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. The first question mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? So how can they be removed so that we can know God? Well, then we have the red color. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. We don't have to be. We can choose not to be. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. Sorry, my eye itches. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? 
And if you would like to do that, if you want to accept Jesus as your Savior right now, you don't have to continue to wait. You don't have to come with everything in order in your life. You don't have to come perfect. Come as you are. Come with your sin because no sin is hidden from God. He knows all your sins. He knows your secret sins. He knows things that people do not know about you. He knows them all. And he still loves you. So come to his son. Come to a relationship with God through his son. So let's pray this prayer. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so if you invited Jesus to be your Savior, and welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. And the green color on this bracelet is about spiritual growth. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. So we have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. So then we have a little symbol of the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. And then we have the little praying man. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. Also, pray for others. Pray for others that are in need. Um, the little baptism symbol. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then you have the fellowship hands. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. Amen. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. And this was uh, E3 Resources, I believe. E3 Resources. So if you, if you did invite Jesus in, then you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his son. All right. I did not write anything on Facebook today. I've had a busy day. I got Seth done this morning, got his morning routine done, and then I started wrapping packages, and I wrap everything that we have, and I, uh, I got Gracie a cat tower and put it together today, and um, we've had a busy day, and then I had made homemade potato soup last night. And I threw a bunch of more ingredients in it and revived my potato soup. 
so I didn't have to make another meal tonight. So anyway, potato soup has been really good the past two days because it's been cold outside. Let me do the blessing from God and let's pray. And I'm going to get off of here. So we're just going to continue going through Psalms. And then I think when we get through Psalms, we may do Proverbs. But I'd kind of like to start Proverbs on a number one day so that it'll be easier to keep up with. So I know that I can't be ready for Proverbs by January 1st maybe March 1st, uh, maybe we'll shoot for March 1st for Proverbs. Proverbs is such a good book. It has so much good wisdom in it. I really like it. All right, well, let's pray. God, we just thank you for this time that uh, we can come together, God, and we can learn more about your word. We just thank you for your truths, God. We thank you for reminding us that you are our creator, you are our sustainer, you are our provider, and you are our protector. And God, that you, you alone, water things when they need to be watered. You alone take care of all these things, God. That there is nobody in this world that can do as good of a job of taking care of what you created other than you. So God, we just cry out to you for the lost people in our country and in this world. God, we just pray that you would draw them to you. God, we pray for the prodigals to return while there is still time. We pray that you would give us a boldness that we've never had before to go out and share your truths and share the gospel of Jesus to a, a lost and dying world. We pray for anyone that comes here that has a need, God, to learn more about your word. We just pray that you would bless them and protect them and provide for them and their families, God. And we just pray. I pray for all my friends and my family and all of our family members and my friends' family members. Just pray for a blessed Christmas for them. But if any of them are sick, that you would heal them before Christmas. That um, if any of them need Jesus, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus. God, I just pray that moving forward, that we would spend more time in your presence, that we would testify of the good things that you've done, and that we would encourage more. We would encourage others, God, that you would keep us close to Jesus. You would keep us close walking with Jesus. You would help us to walk in the Spirit every day. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I'm going to put my sweater on because I was a little bit cold. I turned my heater up. Hey, but this is me. This is what happens when you get older. You're cold for a little while and then you're hot and then you're cold. And I slept in my robe last night all night long with the heater on, it was cold part of the night, take the cover off, put it back on, but for the most part, I stayed pretty comfortable with my robe over my clothes all night. Okay, so this is a blessing from God, and it is number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance to upon you. And or make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. I left part of it out. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 
And someday I'm going to be able to say it without having to read it. And that is going to be awesome. And I don't know when because I've been doing this for about a year now. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, each one of you are so precious to me. I have been putting trivia challenge uh, questions on my comments. So try, and it goes with whatever we studied. So try to go in and answer those if you can. I don't know. I want to give some kind of reward, but I haven't decided what to do yet. But anyway, just for fun, let's do some Bible trivia every time that we're on here. And um, I think it'll be fun. I love Bible trivia. And I just make up questions from what we just read. So it's not hard. It's not like I have a Bible trivia challenge um, game that I'm getting the questions from. I'm just letting the Holy Spirit lead me. All right, well, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, which is Tuesday already. Christmas Eve is Friday. Probably will not be on here for Christmas Eve or Christmas. Um, probably the 26th. I'm going to try to hit every night this week, except for maybe Friday. I don't know. I might come on here Friday and eat fudge. And celebrate because <laughs> my sugar fast ends tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day of my sugar fast. I planned it so that I can make fudge and eat fudge for Christmas. Then I'm probably going to get back on it. I think I'm going to do 21 days every month. I mean, it's not, it's not, I'm not doing a biblical thing. It's just I want to cut back on sugar. And it's one way that I can make myself do it. If I commit myself to it, then I can do it. The only thing is, a lot of times I substitute crackers and bread. And I got to get better on carbs too. Because they kind of go hand in hand. All right. Well, much love. Enough about my trying to cut back on sugar. Much love. And cyber hugs. I'll see you again. Good night.